Hi, we're going to be looking at gas-powered cycles, more specifically Brayton cycles. The problem statement that we have is 15 kilograms of air enters an air standard Brayton cycle at 100 kPa and 20 degrees Celsius. The pressure ratio is 12 and the maximal temperature of the cycle is 1100 degrees Celsius. And the pressure ratio across the compressor is 12 to 1. The maximum temperature in the cycle is 1100 degrees Celsius. Determine the compressor power, turbine power, and thermal efficiency of the cycle. They tell us that CP is equal to 1.004 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw out what the Brayton cycle looks like on our PV diagram. And it looks something like this. So what's happening is we're starting at point 1 over here, we're compressing to point 2, we're going to add heat to point 3, and then we're going to go through a turbine to point 4. On the TS diagram, it looks something like this. From 1 to 2, it's isentropic. From 2 to 3, it's constant pressure, and from 4 back to 1 is also constant pressure. And from 3 to 4, it's isentropic. If we draw it on some sort of schematic, we have a compressor. So we have air entering our compressor at point 1. Then it goes into some sort of combustion chamber. So from point two, it's compressed, goes through a combustion chamber, heat is added, gets to point three before the turbine, goes through a turbine, and then comes out at point four. And then we kind of have the two points connected, like this over here. Something along these lines. So what do they tell us in this question? They tell us that the mass flow rate is 15 kilograms per second, so we get m dot to be 15 kilograms per second. They then go, us, go on to tell us that air enters the compressor at 100 kPa and 20 degrees C. So that means at state one, we have T1 equal to 20 degrees C, P1 equal to 100 kPa. They tell us that our pressure ratio is 12, so RP is equal to 12, and this is P max over P min. They then go on to tell us that the maximum temperature in the system, which is going to be the temperature at point 3, is 1,100 degrees C. So we get T3 is equal to 1,100 degrees C. And finally, they give us Cp is equal to 1.004 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. They then want us to determine the work of the compressor, the work of the turbine, and the thermal efficiency. So we can write that the work of the compressor is equal to the mass flow rate times the enthalpy at point 2 minus the enthalpy at point 1. And this is going to be equal to the mass flow rate times Cp, T2 minus T1. The work of the turbine can be written as the mass flow rate times the enthalpy at point 3 minus the enthalpy at point 4. And this is going to be equal to the mass flow rate, Cp, T3 minus T4. And finally, they want us to determine thermal efficiency. So we can write that the thermal efficiency is the work net divided by Q in. This is going to be equal to the work of the turbine minus the work of the compressor. Keep in mind, when we were solving Rankine cycles, we are ignoring the work of the pump. That was because it was a pump and not a compressor. We can't ignore the work of the compressor in this case, divided by Q in. And if we say that uh, Q in is equal to the enthalpy at state 3 minus the enthalpy at state 2, we can rewrite it as Cp, T3 minus T2, and we get that our thermal efficiency is going to be equal to, with a bit of algebra, we're going to cancel out the CPs, we're going to cancel out the mass flow rate, T3 minus T4, 
minus T2 minus T1 divided by T3 minus T2. We need to find the temperature at point 0.2 and point 0.4. We already have a temperature at point 0.1 and point 0.3. So in order to do that, we're going to remember that from 1 to 2, we have an isentropic process. That means that the temperature at 2 divided by the temperature at 1 to the power of 1 over k minus 1 is equal to the pressure at 2 divided by the pressure at 1 to the power of 1 over k. If we rearrange this, we get that T2 is equal to T1 times P2 over P1 to the power of k minus 1 over k. And this gives us that the temperature at point 2 is going to be equal to the temperature at point 1 in degrees Kelvin. So this is 273 plus 20 times our pressure ratio, so P max over P min, which we said was 12. And we're going to assume that K is equal to 1.4. So this is 1.4 minus 1 divided by 1.4. And this gives us a temperature at point 2 of 595.94 Kelvin. From 3 to 4, we're lucky. We've also got another isentropic process. So we can write down the same relation. We can say that temperature at 4 divided by temperature at 3 to the power of 1 over k minus 1 is equal to pressure at 4 divided by pressure at 3 to the power of 1 over k. We have rearranged for temperature at 4. We get that T4 is equal to T3, P4 over P3 to the k minus 1 over k. And we know that pressure at 4 is equal to pressure at 1. Pressure at 3 is equal to pressure at 2. So this is the inverse of the pressure ratio. So we can say that P4 over P3 is equal to 1 over the pressure ratio. And here we said that P2 over P1 was equal to the pressure ratio. So we get that temperature at 4 is equal to temperature at 3 in Kelvin. So that's 1,100 plus 273 times 1 over 12 to the 1.4 minus 1 over 1.4. And we get that the temperature at 4 is 675.05 Kelvin. We now have all the information required in order to solve for the different uh, things they ask for. We can say that the work of the compressor is the mass flow rate, Cp, T2 minus T1. This is equal to 15 times 1.004 times, we said, 595.94 minus, we have to be careful here, this is in Kelvin, so we have to put it in Kelvin as well, 293. And we get that the work of our compressor is equal to, uh, sorry, 4,562.3 kilowatts. We can say that the work of the turbine is mass flow rate, Cp, T3 minus T4. And this is equal to 15 times 1.004 times, once again, it has to be in Kelvin. So we have 1,373 minus 675.05. And we get that. Our work of turbine is equal to 10,511.52 kilowatts. And we said that efficiency, or thermal efficiency, was equal to work of turbine minus work of compressor divided by Q in. And if we say that these are all dependent on mass flow rate, we can solve for Q in as mass flow rate Cp T3 minus T2, and this is 15 times 1.004 times 1,373 minus 595.94. We get that our Qn is equal to 11,702.52 kilowatts. So we get our thermal efficiency is going to be 10,511.52 minus 
4,562.3 divided by 11,702.52. And this gives us a thermal efficiency of 0 0.5085 or 50.85%.